Good morning, Mets fans, and welcome to a Tuesday edition of Driving with Mr. Met. I am Mr. Met, and last night, the Mets take one step closer to the end of the line as they are defeated by the Colorado Rockies in a pretty lopsided affair. Um, tough night for Steven Matz. The Mets are now in a position where they are five games back with 12 games to play, and you know what that means. You gotta win them all. I'm gonna talk about last night's game on today's show and preview tonight's game in just a moment. It's amazing how quickly the tides can turn in a, in a baseball game, particularly a baseball game being played at Coors Field in Denver. Um, the Mets jumped out to an early lead against a pitcher with an ERA over six. Um, Nimmo with the leadoff home run. A couple of innings later, Jeff McNeil hits a two-run homer. Um, Ahmed Rosario gets himself an RBI, uh, an RBI double. And the Mets have a four-run lead. Um, solo home run for me and Desmond. It's a 4-1 lead. And then Steven Matz gets to the um, fourth inning. And the whole world crumbles around him. He ends up giving up six runs um, in the inning. It was it was an ugly, it was an ugly, <laughs> an ugly outing for for Matz. And unfortunately, he looked really good through the first two three innings of the game. He looked in command. He wasn't throwing balls. He wasn't walking anybody. And then all of a sudden, he sort of lost it. And that was that. And just that fast at Coors Field, the game's over. And the sad part is it shouldn't have been over. You know, there's, there was plenty of game for the Mets to, the Mets offense to, to sort of get itself back together and figure out how to win and um, drive in some runs and they had opportunities to do so and they failed to cash them in. So it's a, it's a, it's a shitty loss. It's a loss that the Mets couldn't afford to take. They really needed to sweep this series. Um, but they're still not mathematically eliminated, <laughs> so um, so I'm not I'm not giving up yet. Uh, but it was a tough one. Um, I bitched about it yesterday, and I'm, I'm not going to bitch about it again as much. But I'm going to throw out the fact that I think the Mets were tired last night. I think they got in late into Colorado, did their best to shrug it off. But you know, it's not that easy. It's not that easy to just. I only got four hours of sleep last night. I'm fine to go out and play today. Like I, I felt pretty lousy yesterday myself, and it's because I went to the game on Sunday night, and I ended up getting home at about two and two a.m., one thirty in the morning, and I had to get up at six o'clock to get the kids ready for school and to get to work. And and I don't have a physically demanding job. I sit at a desk, uh, and uh, I talk on the phone to people. That, that's pretty much my job. And and. Uh, these guys are going out there and trying to perform at an elite level as athletes, and they are trying to do it on the same amount of sleep that I got last night or two nights ago. It's just not fair, um, and it sucks. And I'm not, again, I'm not blaming anything there. I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying they lost because they were tired, but uh, that certainly doesn't help matters one bit. Um, another uh, sort of sunny note from last night's game was Pete Alonso had a couple of hits, got himself off the, the schneid and out of his slump. Um, uh, McNeil also had two hits. Conforto um, still hitless, and he had a couple of big R RBI opportunities that he squandered, so that's a bummer. Um, just an overall lousy game, um, and that's that. You know, and it's funny the Rockies are so bad because their pitching is. I mean, their uh, offense is really good, and as it always has been. Uh, they were a uh, they were a playoff team last year. And now all of a sudden this year they're just they're just terrible. Their pitching completely fell off. But Gary mentioned it last night on the broadcast. Like the guys that were so good last year, they're either injured or just not performing as well as they did. So it's um, you know it's baseball. <laughs> uh, but the Rockies have quite the offense, and um, they showed it off last night. Uh, the Mets pick up tonight with. Uh, um, Right, Marcus Stroman. I'm sorry, I couldn't think of his name. <laughs> Marcus Stroman on the mound for the Mets tonight. Um, and it'll be Wilson Ramos catching him. And tomorrow, uh, the Mets close out the series with Noah Syndergaard on the mound, and Rene Rivera will be catching Syndergaard. So th the, the, the Wednesday game, uh, the afternoon game on Wednesday, will be worth watching closely because it'll be the opportunity to see whether uh, Nito, I'm sorry, uh, Ramos really is the reason that Syndergaard's numbers aren't that great. Coors Field is not going to help his cause, and I'm afraid that that's 
going to be the, the built-in excuse for the Syndergaard camp if things don't go according to plan. Um, but th this, this sort of drama needs to be put aside and dealt with in the offseason, not during uh, uh, what is a, a playoff push, although it's looking more and more bleak. Again, I'm not giving up. I think I know that I should give up. Like, I think in the back of my mind I know that it's, it's over. Um, but I'm, I'm not going to give up. Not yet. Um, one thing I, I think needs to be mentioned here, uh, and I'll make this brief because I don't really have much else to say about the game or anything. And um, One thing that needs to be mentioned is the fact that the Mets, um, the, the, the Mets have, even if they miss the playoffs, they have gotten themselves some experience this year in uh, playoff-type baseball where it's tense, it's stressful, and the, the experience of, of actually playing those kinds of games on the field in front of the, the, the hot crowd that, that they've had a few times this year at City Field, um, that's invaluable. And even if the Mets do miss the playoffs, which it looks like they will, uh, even if they do, the fact that Pete Alonso and Jeff McNeil and J.D. Davis and Ahmed Rosario and these other guys have gotten that taste of, of what it feels like and experienced how um, stressful it can be and how exciting it can be at the same time. Um, that's, to me, the silver lining to this season, that the, the culture around the team has now, uh, can now adapt to this new change, this new sense of, wow, we're, 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 pretty, we're actually pretty good. And if you really look at it, if you really peel back the layers of the onion... The Mets have played good teams pretty well. Uh, they haven't won, but they've they've hung in there with a team like the Dodgers. You know, when you really examine the, the weekend series, I mean, you take the Friday game out of the equation. Saturday and Sunday, the Mets were in both of those games. Obviously, they won on Saturday. But Sunday, I mean, that's a game that for seven innings, the Mets are winning. And, I, of course, look, they didn't win the game. You, don't, you know, close only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades. I get it. But... The fact that they are are putting up a, a strong effort against these teams that should be crushing them, um, it shows a lot about the character of these guys. And the fact that Dom Smith is pushing himself to make a return before the season is over shows a lot about the character of Dom Smith. The fact that Robert Gazelman wants to get back from, from his arm impingement on his arm uh, issues, that shows a lot. It shows what this team is made of at the core. And while they may not go to the playoffs this year, the experience they've gathered might make it that much, uh, might make the drive that much stronger for next year. And so while I'm not giving up on this season, I'm looking ahead a little bit. I'm, I'm trying to sort of put things into perspective. It's something that I did after 2006 when the Mets lost in game seven of the NLCS. And I was very wrong about my thoughts after 2006. I said, I said, you know, this is this is this is a taste of something that is going to be um, more to come as we go forward because this team is so young and so talented. And of course, we all know what happened. Um, I, I I have similar feelings about this current team that that this is a sign of things to come. Uh, the talent is here. It is young. It is it is hungry, and it's shown this year that it can hang in there with some of the best teams in the game. So. So that'll wrap it up for today. Um, kind of a somber, whatever, it's a somber day. It's a shitty night last night. But we dust ourselves off and we go out tonight. Um, so hopefully tomorrow's tone won't be as somber. I'll be able to talk about a successful outing from Marcus Stroman. And um, the Mets maybe, just maybe, picking up a game on somebody that they're chasing. You know, if one of these teams would actually lose once, that would be lovely. Uh, that's what five and two last week and gave uh, picked up zero ground at all. So uh, it is what it is, I guess. Um, but we'll talk about it tomorrow. Until then, I uh, thank you for watching. Follow me on Twitter at Mr. Underscore Met. And as always, let's go Mets.